Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's coverage here at NYSE. This is our East Coast studio infrastructure, super pop, point of presence. We're building out Silicon Valley, which has already been built out with Palo Alto, and then here at NYSE, two major regions for theCUBE, bringing, connecting both Silicon Valley and Wall Street. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, wall-to-wall -wall coverage on Wall Street. Jeff is here, founder and chief growth officer of TensorWave, a hot company in an area that everyone loves, which is GPUs, CPUs, you name it. We need more horsepower for Gen of AI. Jeff, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to be here, John. Thanks for great having me. Great to meet you in person. Likewise. We did a briefing a few months ago. Love what you're working on. You guys are building with and uh, with AMD mm -hmm. uh, a alternative opportunity for people who are hungry That's right. for compute and horsepower to power these Gen AI systems. That's right. Um, awesome opportunity. Take a minute to explain first, you know, the setup how you got here, yeah. how this all came about, and the relationship with AMD. Yeah, awesome, so thank you for this. Uh, so our background is in cloud. We've been deploying data centers and building cloud for the last six years, um, got set up in Wyoming, and we were deploying large clusters of a different kind of chip called an FPGA. And the chip provider we were working with was Xilinx, and then Xilinx about three years ago got acquired by AMD. It was one of their strategic AI plays. And we were working very closely with Xilinx. Xilinx would send us all of their latest and greatest chips, and we'd get them deployed for them in our cloud. And we essentially became AMD's debugging department. So we got really embedded with AMD early on yeah. and working very closely with their team. And now that all of our friends and partners who were at Xilinx were now all in the AI positions, um, it, it strategically placed us for the opportunity that's coming now with AI. And so um, last year, when there was a huge chip, sh chip shortage where companies couldn't get access to chips, um, a lot of companies who had deployed money into these portfolio companies um, couldn't get access to any chips. Like they literally gave them money um, to spend and they couldn't spend it. And so they came to us saying, hey, can you help us? Can you get us access to any compute? And we were more focused on um, high performance compute, deploying, um, you know, doing weather modeling, video transcoding, high frequency trading and that sort of stuff. And, uh, but that was right when Lisa Sue at AMD announced the MI300X in the fall of last year. And we said, hold that thought. We think we're onto something. Um, and we think that AMD can be a viable op opportunity and option for people to use to power their AI workloads. And so uh, we sold off the last company and uh, went all in on AMD. And uh, we, we were announced officially last year in 2023 in December as their official uh, infrastructure partner of choice at TensorWave. Um, Lisa announced us from stage and we've been working very closely with them ever since, being the first to deploy the MI300X um, at scale and working with them very closely to continue to tune and optimize these large GPU clusters. But what is the product you guys are building? Because I mean, so we'll get to AMD in a second because they're executing flawlessly right now. Yes. And they're they're balancing the nice act between x86 and then the future of the future of computing, basically I yep. call it. Um, what are you guys doing with AMD? Is it a, is it a, is it a compute cloud? Is it a graphics cloud? GPU cloud? What specifically are you guys building? Yeah, we are an AMD GPU cloud where we provide, uh, we provide compute specifically right now for uh, AI workloads. So that's what the, the chips are, are tuned for. And uh, we work a lot with HPC, but mostly working with companies that need um, access to compute for AI. So whether you're doing training, fine tuning, or inference, um, we're focused on building large clusters that can support customers who need access to more compute. And on the AMD side, we're very bullish on AMD. Uh, we've worked with them on the FPGA side. Uh, we've seen what they've done with the CPUs. Like they, they weren't the dominant player on the CPU side and slowly edge their way up yeah. to becoming the dominant player on the CPU side. And we see what they're doing on the GPU side. And we believe they have the, the full stack of hardware to really um, create a compelling um, edge in the market um, to support the continued demand for uh, AI compute. Yeah, it's interesting, the, um, their leadership on the x86, I mean, a lot of people, they have to balance that actually. You don't see them really flexing a lot publicly, but. Yep. You know, the Xilinx and the FPGA side, the relationships you guys have built yep. now are coming full circle. That's right. You So you guys offer um, GPU as a service with AMD. Exactly. Okay, great. Well, first of all, it's getting a little loud in here. The closing bell's about to take place in, in about eight minutes. Um, well, take me through the value proposition because you guys um, are very modest in, in your company approach. You're not out there um, bragging and, and talking a lot about the hype, but it's a, kind of a high demand market. This. Give us a, a taste of what's happening with you guys, with customers, some of the demand, some of the engagements, product roadmap, c c share as much as you can, but look yeah. at the data. Happy to. Uh, so obviously, yeah, you can see across the board that people need access to compute, and they're trying to get access to it wherever they can, which is why we saw it as a good opportunity for AMD to enter the market, because frankly, like people weren't 
demanding for AMD GPUs. They needed just compute in general. So we saw this as a really good opportunity with the chip shortage um, to enter the market, to, to create the behavioral shift from people looking at the, the competition to considering something else because they needed optionality. And um, you're exactly right. The, the demand is overwhelming. And we see that right now, um, with the large customers we're talking to with the Fortune 500 and beyond, um, they can't have what happened in 2023 happen again. And so they, they, they need and want optionality. We're talking to uh, CIOs and CTOs who said, we, we need something to help diversify. Yeah. And we also need to have something to, uh, to help price better the competition. Yeah. And so a lot of companies are sending out a signal, getting behind AMD, and um, we're excited to be uh, at the forefront of it to help AMD continue to deploy these large clusters at scale. You know, Jeff, I always say when you when you have markets that are hot, the barriers to entry attract new entrants. And then obviously NVIDIA is seeing that with the numbers. Again, people talk about price, price leverage, but also risk management. Right. As people think about data centers, it's always been, okay, trade-offs between my risk, right. prices of what I can acquire. And if I can't get anything that may be on allocation, right then that's a disruption to business, right. that can be quantified. So you get all these kind of, I don't want to say total cost of ownership, because more of a install, what am I, what's my return on assets, or return on investment. This is more like real time decision making. It is. This is going on right now. Can you share your thoughts on this? Because this is a one of the big dynamics. We, we see it big. And, and to your point, like, you know, as, as CIOs and CTOs are thinking about their roadmap and, and how quickly AI is advancing, and it's not slowing down anytime soon, and the demand for compute isn't slowing down anytime soon, um, they have to think very fast because before people had, you know, CIOs and CTOs had five to 10 year to 15 year roadmaps to deploy data centers as they were considering CTO. Yeah. But now they just need speed to market. The yeah. speed is everything right now. And so what we're able to do in deploying large scale numbers of GPUs in data centers and giving customers access to large clusters of GPUs makes it a lot easier for them to make the decision. And to your point on the security side, like they have to consider like what's happening with your data um, are the data centers protected? Uh, is it reliable? And these are things at TensorWave we like to focus on uh, more than the braggadocious things that, that come with the excitement around AI. We're really hyper-focused on supporting customers and their needs. And so I always say, let your game do the talking. Let's get into the relationship with AMD because I find that that's a real differentiator for uh, TensorWave because you guys have had that previous experience prior to that becoming the centerpiece of AMD strategy. If you look at AMD, you know, they have to keep the volumes on x86. They're going to do a consortium with Intel. Intel's obviously now behind AMD, but they're betting the ranch on on, on that GPU market. So are we. XPU, and you guys are too. So you have that opportunity. That's one. Um, also, Edge is yep. big. So now if you look at distributed inference, yep. distributed training, yep. another opportunity. Edge. So talk about those two market opportunities because this is going to be a major growth driver for AMD. That's right. As you guys help them come into the market. You're going to accelerate their footprint. That's right. So we've seen across the board that uh, when when AI got started, most most companies were focused on training. These foundation models would come in and they deployed five to ten thousand uh, GPU clusters focused on training. And then once they were done with the training, they're like, "Well, what needs to happen next?" Well, uh, thankfully, AMD did a great job at the the chip architecture that they created is fully optimized for inference. Um, inference ha is very uh, memory hungry, and so the HBM on the AMD chips is more than twice what is currently available on NVIDIA, and so um, it's a huge advantage right now for people that are looking for the inference demand to be supported, and it's a perfect time for AMD to jump in there and um, and take advantage of, yes, they can do training, yeah. but they can also do the inference at scale based on the user demand as more companies are, are implementing AI into their workloads. You guys are pretty modest on the milestones on funding. We covered your news on SiliconANGLE. Me too. Um, obviously, CapEx is a big number. How yep. do you guys look at the capital side of this and what happens next for you guys? Yeah, so we thank you for doing that. We, we raised $43 million on a safe note. All of that went towards data centers and GPUs and supporting our customers. And uh, we're gearing up right now, having conversations uh, leaning towards our price round to fund the next uh, exciting expansion on our GPU offering as we go into MI 325s, the yeah. 355s, and beyond. And so, uh, yeah, we it takes a lot of money to, uh, <laughs> to pay for those GPUs, to pay for those chips. Yeah. And luckily, we have great supporters um, that are backing us. So you're pretty versatile. The safe gives you the convertible, so yeah. you can go focus on a price round. That's right. Pricing equity, which means it's probably going to be a monster round. Is AMD involved uh, in the cap table at all? They are. So AMD is, uh, yeah, participated in our safe rounds uh, in a significant way. And yeah, we're 
talking with them about how they will continue to support us ongoing, and we're grateful for their support. Okay, Jeff, while well, I got you here, again, yep. the closing bell is going to go out. That might interrupt us, but we'll, we'll be fun to hear that. Yep. It goes off. Talk about AMD's value proposition, because a lot of people um, aren't squinting through the details about their real opportunity. What is um, about AMD's position with not only your opportunity, but them as a company yeah. to move into this new territory? You know, they're going to still milk the X86 so that so that's kind of mature. It's never going to go away. It's going to be nope. cases for that as well. It's smaller, faster, cheaper on edges, and compute will be great inference augmentation. Right. But the big GPU market where we know the performance is needed, we already seen AI thrive in that environment for applications. Right. Well, I mean, we see the competition. NVIDIA has, what, 30 to $40 billion in market cap on their data center GPUs, and AMD has 3 to $4 billion. So 10% of that market, um, which we see is an even larger opportunity for them to continue to expand as they grow. Um, so yeah, we, we think that, you know, along with their CPUs, which NVIDIA uses their CPUs and their DGX systems, um, it's only an opportunity for AMD to continue to grow and expand as they support more AI workloads. What's the own. secret sauce of AMD? If someone said, hey, what's the big deal about AMD? What's the we, secret we sauce? We just, uh, oh, yeah. say, are we here? Yeah. Closing the closing bell. There we go. We are here at the Sneer Stock Exchange. I'm John Furrier, hosting the queue. We got the closing bell behind us. We're gonna let this play out and enjoy the, enjoy the ride here. Ooh. Third line is closing, and here we go. The market's closed. This is what it's all about here. Hey. NYFC. All right. Amazing. The market is closed here. Everyone's <laughs> going crazy. Still going. It's a great scene. Everyone's on the floor looking at the bell. They get photo opportunities again. What a historic place the NYSC is. That's the closing bell. Opening bell is just as rowdy and always fun to watch those. Um, and it's a welcome in interruption to an interview here. Well, Jeff, I mean, we're talking about AMD. Yeah. Okay, for the folks watching that might not be, you ask any gamer, they know all about AMD. Oh, yeah, of course. Lay it out. I mean, us speeds and feed nerds love the hardware. We of love course. hardware. Of course, of um, course. What, what is about AMD? How would you describe um, why they're positioned well yep technically and from a headroom perspective yep. to bring to the table uh, a 10% share that could grow and eat share quickly yep. into this massively growing market. Yeah, well, I, I we've seen what they've done in the past with their CPUs and we've seen the architecture with their chiplets that they've deployed here, which we've seen from a hardware perspective is, is light years ahead of the rest. Yeah. And we see them continuing to head in that trajectory. And so what Lisa Sue and Mark Papermaster are doing at AMD, yeah. we're, we're excited to get behind them as they continue to advance, as they're doing it in a very strategic, careful and consistent fashion yeah. Um, that, yeah, we, we believe in. Yeah, the Cube Research, Dave and I run that team, got a great uh, group going into the semis and cover Broadcom, AMD, and NVIDIA, looking at all that. We believe that, a, obviously, the clustered systems wave is gonna change the data center, of course, as well as the hyperscalers. And it's a distributed computing right. architecture. So it's it's cloud operations. Sure. So it's not about cloud versus on-prem anymore. It's nope. about, hey, I have resources I'm managing I'm also going to go to service providers like you guys yep. because at the end of the day, there are constraints around power and cooling. That's right. There are major innovation trends around distributed training, distributed um, uh, inference, yep. and that we haven't got to reasoning and reinforced learning as the human in the loop or machine in the loop yep. for consume data and contribute new data, creating yep. that new data yep. that needs intelligence. That's right. And again, this is, again, just a prediction, yep. a pretty obvious one if you look at it, of what there's still so much growth. I mean, that's just technical. That's right. That's going to float up so the need for more horsepower is clear. Now, on the other side of the equation, you got all these developers who are going crazy right now building apps that will take advantage of this wave. AMD and the chip guys have rode that wave. They know that it's not a dot-com bubble burst. It's, nope. it's hey, I'll just use more horsepower. The apps will adjust. That's right. It reminds me of the PC days. Hey, Windows runs better with a faster processor. That's right. Welcome. Okay. We can't do full motion video yet. Now we can exactly. as things progress. Yep. The evolution of the industry yep. is not about, well, I can't do that today. No, it's coming. That's right. It's so obvious. Exactly. Where do you see AMD selling? What do you know about AMD that you can share around? why you guys are betting so hard on AMD technically, and again, how that fits into what you're doing. Yeah, well, we, uh, along with the uh, architecture that they've built out on the hardware side of things that we're excited about, they've also made some strategic um, plays when it comes to open source and open standards, which is big, to, to blast open the ecosystem. When we talk to other customers, they get frustrated that the, the competition owns the entire stack and they're locked into a particular ecosystem um, with 
the yeah, price gouging that's associated with it. And AMD has made it very clear they're going to be focused on supporting the open source ecosystem and supporting open standards um, that will allow for continued innovation across the ecosystem yeah. and, and beyond, which is something that we value at TensorWave and want to continue to support the open source ecosystem. So that's one of the main reasons that, that we are bullish on them. And they're focusing on customers across the board. Um, they, they have the ability, they've made a lot of strategic investments. They invested in, in Silo, a, a huge research firm out in Europe to help support the enterprise. Um, and they're, they're hiring at faster than they possibly can uh, to get the, the right support yeah. to continue to build their team to support uh, the growing demand for AI. You know, it's interesting, you know, when you look at the opportunity that AMD has, we talked about a lot of people, actually on this trip, this media week has come up at least multiple times, that when you, you, you want to move the compute to the data, and when you start thinking about form factor, right. if you have the right data strategies, whether you're using a managed service for either co-locating the highly available data and high availability, That's right. latency is the killer app. It is. And if you, it's also the fatal flaw yep. if you misdesign your apps with uh, a latency factor not addressed. That's right. So it's almost an SLA requirement. It is. And some it's nanoseconds, some it's milliseconds. It depends who you talk to. That's right. The use cases and workloads will define the latency requirement. That's right. Okay, we believe that to be true. Absolutely. You don't debate that. No, okay, across true. the board. No, that's going to change the system architecture between, okay, my configuration on the deployment. Forget the app guys right yep. now for a minute. We'll come to them in yep. a second. Yep. If I don't figure out the right architecture of making sure that my data strategy at that's this right. device or, you know, small on-premise data center or a large node, whatever the node is on the network, yep. they're going to have criteria yep. for this requirement. That's right. Okay. This is where this versatility comes in. It is. Versatility having a big honking uh, machine yep. to process. You can't just take a monster box, That's right. God box, and put it on a light bulb nope. for computer vision. That's right. But you want to have a processor. You, you, you want to have access. So talk about this, and then we'll get to the, the, the application. But this is a super important requirement right. that if it's not defined, the latency SLA goes out the window. That's true. Well, we, we see customers across the board. Like every customer has a unique requirement, whether it's they need more throughput, faster latency, they need geolocation, they have security requirements. They have a long list of things that they need um, that aren't currently supported at the hyperscalers. And uh, this is where we're able to come in and help tune the infrastructure to what their exact use case is. And so we work with partners um, that, yeah, can, can tune the infrastructure to exactly what they need to hit the, in, to hit the throughput, to hit the latency needs that they need uh, to be able to scale out their inference. And, and then they're, they're all unique. And this and is AMD's where- AMD's well positioned for that. A, AMD's- You feel comfortable that very. in that versatility and flexibility environment, Absolutely. AMD is well positioned. I, I, I would even say in some cases, better positions. Okay, we'll, we'll dig into that later. I'm going to do a follow-up. Okay, let's go to the application side. Yep. So now, okay, applications ride on the rising tide of performance, whether it's, it's distributed a little bit more complicated than the old yep. server example, but it, we just talked about that. Now, I want to leverage all this capability. So one of the hot trends that's coming up that we're seeing is, is that um, developers love things like Lambda, serverless. Why? Because I don't have to do anything. It's just right. call, I call a function. That's right. We see a vision on the Cube Research where um, developers will have in the CI/CD pipeline right. essentially function call. I'm mean, oversimplifying right. to make the point. I'm not thinking about the guardrails that was set up. I just want to go. Hey, I got some new data that hasn't been fully trained, or and or I gotta be resilient. Yeah. Maybe pull something back and send it to TensorWave. Go fix this. Yeah. I might and deploy a service. Yep. To I have data sets that have been pre-orchestrated or. Um, pre-set up. We talked to a bunch of startups that are doing with encryption. Yep. Uh, we heard Protopia, great company. We love that company. Yep. Um, so you start to see new things yep. that isn't in yesterday's cloud native toolbox. Right. Highly connected, intentional That's relationships. Right. Yep. The developers will take advantage of. They don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. It's just like it's it's a hard top to optimize infrastructure. Right. Explain the importance of what this is and then what does it do for value? Right. Well, we, we see that need across the board right now where companies coming to us with all unique requirements and a lot of these application and developers coming in to fill the gaps. Obviously, AMD is doing the best they can to provide yeah. as much support uh, for the open source ecosystem, providing their own support on the software side of things, but also supporting these startups that are jumping in uh, to continue to support. So we're excited about working with every single one of them to continue to fill the ecosystem. Uh, for us, it's providing the compute, giving people as easy access as they can to as much compute as they need to get access to yeah. um, at the best price performance they could possibly yeah. get, and um, 
creating a platform that's easy for them to use, that's yeah. reliable and secure yeah. for them to continue to build out. Why I love your opportunity is because I brought up them that function. Yeah. Serverless changed the game. I asked Andy Jassy once when he was the CEO of AWS on theCUBE. Yeah. Um, actually, Stu Miniman and I, who's now a Red Hat, both yep. asked this question. I said, if you could rebuild AWS today, mm. how would you do it? Mm. Okay. He said, I would do it on serverless. Okay. So if you take that serverless, what that meant for the cloud, you're going down this road where for the developer, it's GPU-less. That's right. To them, it's just a resource call. That's right, abstracted and away altogether. Are, policies are involved. And they're the human in the loop coding the application. That's right. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, Somewhat. like our, our focus is on yeah. bare metal managed Kubernetes. Uh, we do have some customers that are building serverless applications on top of ours. Not necessarily serverless, but the developer experience yeah. has to be as easy as possible. And, yeah. and and our goal is to abstract away that compute. Yeah. Like the, the they don't need to know what's underneath the hood. If they can yeah. just get an API call, get access to the amount of compute they need with the amount of requirements they need to be hit. That's what we're excited yeah, about. Yeah, Mike. Just to clarify, my point wasn't serverless. Is more of what yep. that meant to him yep. at that time. Okay. Now. The GPU is all this provisioning cost. That's right. You you doing it as a service. Yep. You can provide that abstraction. That's, that's right. what I was getting. That's at. Right. So the developer, it's like a serverless call, but it's like for them as GPU is. I don't have to worry about. No, it. we want to make it as easy as possible. But you see that future. Yeah. The developer. Yeah. There, there there's a lot of interest in that for sure. All right. Cool. Well, it's great to have you on the queue. I want to ask you just in general with the, with the venture you got going on. Super exciting. I Thank think you. it's going to be a big opportunity. Again, the the market's ripe. There's hungry demand for more horsepower, hardware's back. It feels like the 90s to me. Um, just the systems architecture, just the whole new revolution. It's that reminds me of the 86 to 96 time frame when I grew up from proprietary to open interconnected systems. We're seeing open ecosystem, you're seeing open source. Yep. Again, a lot of parallels, not a real bubble to burst because you got so much underlying intrinsic growth. That's right. Increase in performance and developer activity will ride up with that no real pop. And That's maybe, right. Maybe a little reality check, but there's no way it's not going to grow. What is what is your plan? Okay, you're here, you're going to do a financing, you got the safe, you're deploying. What's the business plan? What are your key goals? Uh, our, our key goals is to uh, continue to grow and develop that relationship with AMD even more uh, and continue to co-develop as we continue to uh, deploy large clusters to to hit the demands of the uh, of the customers. And um, yeah, as we see, and as you mentioned, like a lot of people talk about, is it a bubble? We, we like, sure, there might be some it's companies that are, that, are, that are left in the wake of, of all of the money that's being pumped in, um, but we don't see the need for compute going down yeah. anytime soon. As, as users and yeah. as enterprises continue to onboard customers, that demand is only going to increase. And so this is where uh, we have placed ourselves strategically financially, where we have the resources with the data center up to gigawatts of power over the next few years to be able to support um, these hyperscalers that need access to compute at a, at a very quick time. And, but also to have the support in place, because as things are moving so quickly, yeah. we're, we're seeing that a lot of these larger companies don't have the speed or the internal expertise yeah. to be able to handle this. And so this is where we come in to be able to um, help them identify what they need and then provide the extra compute support yeah. on, on our side. It's certainly not easy, you know how hard it is, and, right. and uh, you know, startups are hard, especially when you're a rapid growth, but we're in a super cycle. So That's you, right. you know, two, three years in, you start to see. So, you know, I say keep gassing it, you know. We're in it, pedal to the metal, man. <laughs> great to have John. you on the queue. Thank you so here much. We're at our NYC, had a great little interruption there with the bell close, of course. Always exciting here, and so much action happening in the New York City area, especially at the NYSC, where you know, this place has got always popping with activities. Again, the Cube is here bringing you all that, connecting Silicon Valley Studio in Palo Alto with our new studios here on the East Coast. It's not super pop, it's a, it's a point of presence. It's, a, it's an access point for our network and, and the community. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.